As a huge fan of 2-in-1 devices, I was genuinely excited to see Asus's new ROG Flow tablet in person back in January at CES. It looked like something plucked straight out of 2077. Sharp rectangular lines, transparent panels with internal illumination, a futuristic kickstand and a clear gaming pedigree powered by AMD's next-gen silicon. Even though I'm not a hardcore gamer, I immediately wanted to get my hands on it because it just looked so cool. A tablet with a detachable keyboard and the power to run demanding PC titles all crammed into a compact 13-inch form factor. Well, upon finally arriving, I wasn't prepared for the thick impression this thing left on me. Literally. I wanted to ask you this first. Is this the most powerful tablet right now on the market? I have to say yes. I mean, what AMD has been able to accomplish, along with ASUS, I mean, they're brilliant engineers, is cramming in as much as performance, uh, but also by harnessing just AMD's Halo product, which is why it's called Strix Halo, right? You see, this thing is built like a tank, and that's just not a figure of speech. The 1.2 kilo weight, the CNC milled retro futuristic inspired metal chassis, the industrial kickstand, it all adds up. Holding it doesn't just make me feel empowered by the SOC inside, but the sheer girth gives me confidence that I could use it for self-defense. And that girth, by the way, is not just for show. Asus engineered a more substantial cooling system inside to keep the Ryzen AI Max Plus 395 running at full tilt, even under pressure. So it's thick because it has to be, not because someone on the design team got carried away. With that in mind though, even when I pack it up in my sling, and that's without the charger, which honestly deserves its own dedicated bag, it feels like I'm carrying a pair of bookshelf speakers. The weight is indeed noticeable, so much so that using this thing in tablet mode has me wondering if I should add a new brachialis workouts into my weekly routine. As a tablet, I don't see it being used effectively, whereas if it's just docked, or if you're using it with a keyboard, it's a fantastic device. Insanely fast, almost to a point where it's very close to M4 Pro, M4 Max levels of performance when it comes to um, CPU workloads. It became very clear very quickly. This isn't an iPad, not even close. So the initial question that stuck with me was that there has to be a reason for this thing to exist. It has to be very good, by the way. If you end up enjoying this video, subscribe, because why not? So to really understand what this device is all about, I had to take off my casual user glasses and put on a more serious, creator-focused hat. Because while it might be as thick as two or maybe three iPads stacked together, the kind of power it packs into a 13-inch frame is something that deserves real attention. In fact, it's nothing short of remarkable. And this is where things get genuinely interesting because the Flow Z13 doesn't just perform well, it operates in a way that feels almost too good to be true. You see, traditionally, powerful laptops rely on a CPU and a dedicated GPU, each with their own memory pools. Think of it as two brilliant musicians who've never rehearsed together, constantly trying to stay in sync. But the AMD Ryzen AI Max Plus 395, tucked inside this chunky beast, rewrites the script entirely. Instead of that awkward dance between separate components, everything here works in perfect harmony. The CPU and GPU share a unified memory pool, up to 128 gigabytes of it, which means that when I'm editing a video, the graphics core can tap into the exact same data as the processing cores instantly and without a delay. And when it's time to switch gears and dive into a game, for example, that same memory seamlessly shifts roles, acting as a dedicated video memory. In essence, everything happens crazy fast and most of all, super efficient, which I'll get to in a second. The, the Z Flow as a tablet, as a device is awesome, but it's just catered towards a very niche demographic. I like having a massive canvas to work with. And the form factor of the Z13 is just so small that I might have to gravitate towards external accessories to really use the performance of, of Strix Halo. 
In real world use, I can be editing, working on large graphics projects while streaming music and having dozens of browser tabs open and the device just handles it without even breaking a sweat. It's like having a workstation that happens to also be a super compact tablet. At almost any wattage level, this laptop outperforms most other portable devices out there. Comparing it to something like the MacBooks of the world, when it comes to power and efficiency, it only gets beaten by the more powerful M4 Pro and Max models, which is remarkable given that M chips have been dominating the low power, high performance areas for years. Uh, I have people reaching out to me asking, and some of my friends who actually um, are uh, into AI development have reached out to me and said, hey, is this a really cool product? Like, can this actually run uh, local LMs? Like, is it possible? And I've been, yeah, like it's it's possible because it has, you have access to so much memory on, the, on, on a tablet. So if you wanna develop an app to leverage AI, go for it, it's, it's, it's capable of it. For the occasional gamer, this is genuinely amazing because the FlowZ13 runs games like Cyberpunk at over 60 frames per second on high settings effortlessly. But the beauty here isn't just in the raw performance, it's in the elimination of choices. I no longer have to decide whether to pack my laptop or gaming handheld or both when I'm heading out. Unlike a MacBook, I know I have full access to every game I care about as this is a proper Windows PC that handles just about anything I throw at it, with my entire Steam library ready to go at all times. I mean, sure, you can use it as a tablet, but then again, you're dealing with all the gremlins that Windows brings to the table. Windows as an operating system for a tablet is absolutely a, it's not the most convenient uh, way to use a tablet. I have to be honest, after weeks of daily use, it feels very liberating carrying this chubby guy around as I don't plan my day around what my devices can't do, but I plan around what I need to get done. Mornings might begin with writing in laptop mode or watching something in tablet mode, shifting to design work with the keyboard attached and a mouse hooked up or connected to a full desk setup. Wrapping the day with a bit of gaming to wind down feels super cool knowing I'm doing this on that very same device. A device with a display that isn't OLED, but it is very, very nice. It's a 13.4 inch panel with a 2560 by 1600 resolution and a 16 by 10 aspect ratio, which gives it a bit more vertical space compared to typical widescreen layouts. The refresh rate goes up to 180 Hertz with a three millisecond response time, which means everything looks super smooth at all times. It gets bright enough for indoor use and some outdoor search, as long as it's not too, you know, sunny outside. And the color accuracy is solid, making it suitable for creative work like photo or video editing. It also supports Dolby Vision for better looking video playback and can switch color profiles automatically depending on what I'm doing. The screen itself is protected by Gorilla Glass 5 with a special DXC coating, which helps reduce on-screen glare in bright environments and cut down reflections. And it also works with a stylus. Generally speaking, especially gaming devices, the battery life numbers that we see on AMD chips are just way better. And so when you take that sauce, that secret sauce that AMD has, and when you integrate that into Strix Halo, you just get something that's pretty efficient. When it comes to battery life, things really depend on how it's being used. For lighter days, like browsing, watching videos, or working on documents with the screen at mid brightness, it can last, you know, around seven to nine hours, which is no MacBook or iPad territory, but respectable for a device this powerful. Continuous video playback and streaming content lands around the nine hour mark, making it a solid option for media consumption, as long as you don't have to hold it in your hands. But as expected, more demanding workloads tell a different story. Gaming on battery life is, of course, the steepest trade-off depending on the title, of course. The 71 hour battery is reasonable for this category of devices, but power hungry tasks might burn through quickly, especially if you switch to turbo mode. That said, what stands out is how consistent the performance stays on battery. Unlike many Windows laptops that drop off sharply when a plug, 
this one stays cool and most of all silent. If I'm not playing games, I can hardly hear the fans at all, which is not the case on a device like the ROG Ally X, for example. The Flow comes with a detachable keyboard, which doesn't work on its own if it's not connected, so it is not Bluetooth. It's also illuminated, but only on paper. What I mean by that is that it's really hard to notice that illumination in daylight, even when the brightness is cranked up to the max. On the flip side, it has a decent amount of key travel with the expected flex upon pressure. It also has the ability to be used laying flat or attached raised up like the Microsoft Surface Pros of the past for that extra elevation and added comfort. The glass touchpad is surprisingly good for me too. Coming from previous Asus devices, I can say I've never been a huge fan of their trackpads, but this one is pretty decent and most of all, reliable. You can't really use it as a laptop because the keyboard attachment, it's not necessarily something that you can comfortably place on your lap and start doing things. Now, this being a classic two-in-one with a detachable keyboard, using this device in the lab is not as comfortable as using a laptop or something like the iPad Pro with a Magic Keyboard, but at least the kickstand is not sharpened to cause any physical discomfort. In fact, if there's one thing that I like about the kickstand is the little rubber lip on the right, which makes deploying it super easy. This is a test using the front-facing 1440p camera. Now, although it doesn't look as impressive, uh, I think it should sound fairly nice. So let me know in the comments what you think. Hidden amongst the quirky bag, there's also a rear camera, which for the most part exists for scanning documents, which is more than welcome in my book. When it comes to I.O., the Flow Z13 comes with two USB-C 4.0 ports, an HDMI 2.1, and an Asus proprietary power connector for the massive power brick that comes in the box. This being a device that can easily serve creators, unfortunately, there is a micro SD card slot, which I'm not sure why it even exists, to be honest. On the other side, there is a USB-A port for those pesky old school mice dongles, and of course, a headphone jack. Flipping the kickstand all the way up, there is a door for an SSD upgrade, which is fantastic. The thickness here is very well taken into consideration, and the tablet comes equipped with Dolby Atmos powered speakers, where there are two on the side and two front facing ones, which I think sound fairly decent. I guess when they just take a look at the product as a whole, they can immediately associate it as a gaming device. But there's actually a lot more to it. And I think that has to do with the uh, Strix Halo chip that's inside of it. So with all that said, I think the Flow Z13 is one of those rare devices whose identity can be easily misunderstood. Sure, I started this whole thing joking about the girth and trying to treat it like a tablet, but the reality is far more nuanced. Yes, it looks like a tablet. Technically, it is a tablet. But comparing it to other tablets completely misses the point. This isn't meant to compete with an iPad or replace a casual media device. The best way that I can put it is that the Flow Z13 is a full-on high-performance computer that just so happens to be in the skin of a tablet. And when you start thinking of it like that, not as a compromise, but as a category of its own, a unicorn, that's when it really starts to make sense. Talking about unicorns, I just dropped a video on the thinnest and most efficient foldable, the Oppo Find N5. You can check out this episode right here. And while at it, like and subscribe to the channel as well as my newsletter. And as always, it's been an absolute pleasure. This is E. Over and out.